a, a Giants podcast for Giants fans. By Giants fans. It's Sean Morash. On the sideline, into the end zone. Touchdown, Giants! From the offseason, through the wins and the losses, it's time to take one, one, one Giant Giants step. step. All right, welcome into One Giant Step, a Week 9 recap edition at Bryce Gelman, as we can find my cohort, Bryce Gelman, at Sean Morash, is where you can find me on Twitter and X, and this podcast, you can download, subscribe, everywhere podcasts are available. Check it out on the FAN YouTube page. Check it out free on the Odyssey app. Again, everywhere podcasts are available. The Giants have fallen to 2-7. and seven. They've been swept by the Commanders. For the third time since 2007, they are 0-3 versus division opponents at home. They're 0-4 in the division. Um, And Daniel Jones became the first quarterback since the year 2000 to have zero or less passing yards and a throwing touchdown, but still have a QB rating over 100 in a game. So the Giants just invent new things to come up with every week. Bryce, I'm going to be honest here. I just got off the air on WFAN. I'm sitting here with you now. I have a couple ways I could take this thing, but I don't know uh, if anybody's really prepared for them, talk about them, if everybody's going to get upset by them. I don't even know if anybody necessarily cares about certain things I'm going to bring up. I'm going to go rapid fire to you. And let's do it. let me just say this. Okay. One, ultimately looking at Jaden Daniels across the way and not getting him, this law should be a reminder that it sucks, but it's a good thing. That's number one. Number two would be, I'm so tired of people arguing and fighting in behalf of analytics and the go for two thing. Uh, really, I'm still actually, I'll be honest yeah. with you. I'm still texting with buddy Jordan Renato covers the giants about this. Me and him disagree on this. That's number two. And number three, um, could the bye week come any quicker for Deontay banks right now? So uh, those are my, those are my three. You have anything different from there? Or do you want to, you know, kind of tackle those things one by one? I still can't get over the whole Jaden Daniels thing slash Drake May, who looked good today as well. Uh, yeah. And and I just I, man, I, I know you've been tweeting about it a lot. I've also put out my fair share of tweets when I, when it comes to this as well. But the whole all that BS last year that we got excited about for for it's whatever. Hey, Sean, oh. Sean, Sean, I'm feeling it. It's inevitable at this point. If you heard the broadcast. If you if you're at the game, let me know differently. But from hearing the broadcast, the crowd could not have sounded more dead. Really, could yeah. not have sounded more dead, Sean. And I don't they're know if that's a box thing. Think about it. You didn't even get yeah. the booze loud. To... There's nothing exactly. There's nothing to be happy about. There's nothing really to be so like in the moment upset and sad about. So I look at the situation as we're gonna go back to Tommy DeVito. This is inevitable at this point because John Mauer needs to keep butts in seats. Who is going to do that? And it's not true luck. It's not true luck. It's Tommy DeVito. And I, I just watched another dreadful Giants performance today. And as much yeah. as I want to be excited about this team, I don't want to be excited about the team if it means what happened last year. And I think that that is going to be the case in just a few weeks now, Sean. Uh, it's certainly, certainly on the table. So, all right, let's just start right there. And that goes with the quarterback stuff and everything. Look. Giant fans or anybody that covers the NFL or has been in the NFL don't like to use the word tank. They don't like talking about losing games. And for some reason, people get like really upset about it. The word culture gets thrown out a lot. Here is to me the undeniable truth. In fact, the NFL has put its fans in a terrible, terrible position when they root for bad teams, because in theory, you're considered a bad fan. If you root for losses, I still am in this weird spot where rooting is the wrong word. I just know losses are better for the the ultimate, so I don't try to get wound up and get angry. But I can't, like, sit there and root for the Washington Commanders on a Sunday. So I don't know where that leaves me. But I understand the end game here. Today, Jaden Daniels became the first rookie quarterback to beat the Giants twice in a season in 50 years. In 50 years. And it's a reminder that last year when the Giants beat Washington and beat New England and beat Green Bay with Tommy DeVito, that two of those three losses, specifically one of the commanders, it's Jaden Daniels, who's the Giants quarterback today. And how differently do we feel about this organization, this head coach, this team, if Jaden Daniels is doing all that he's doing in a giant uniform? And granted, that would come without Malik Neighbors, but I digress. You need the quarterback. 
this is it, guys. Like, look at it. Wake up. Open your eyes. Hold them open with pins and everything. Losing this game today for the New York Giants is a good thing. I yep. don't want the losses to ultimately cost Brian Dable a job. We could disagree on that, whatever. This I'm not even arguing the future of Brian Dable. Maybe, maybe this this NFL draft will not have a quarterback anywhere near Jaden Daniels or Drake Mays caliber. There's plenty yep. that will want to argue where this draft class falls. Um, we'll dig deeper, maybe. But all I know is in the NFL, every team, and we've talked about this, has warts all over the roster. And the warts can get covered up if you have a quarterback capable of slinging it around and making big plays down the field and keeping you in games. The Giants are incapable of doing that. Daniel Jones today, again, gave you a classic Daniel Jones where he's like powering through and you root for him at that tough run into the end zone, completes that throw to Theo Johnson after Theo Johnson drops all the play. Daniel Jones makes you walk away from a game feeling bad for him, but at the same time, you got to realize nothing comes easy for this team because of Daniel Jones. We all know they're moving on. And the best way to ensure that they get the best possible quarterback moving on is losses. So let watching Jaden Daniels wake anybody else up who doesn't understand that losing is a good thing. You should want them to lose to the Carolina Panthers next Sunday. Carolina beat the New Orleans Saints this week. You should want the Carolina Panthers to get to a third win because they also need a quarterback. Last year versus the Commanders, the Commanders needed a quarterback. Wanting the Giants to win and having them win, it killed the Giants and might have killed their future and it might have risen the Commanders' future. So stop worrying about having a positive three hours in November and start thinking about the damn future. And I hope, I really hope that this organization also sees it that way. And it doesn't mean those players shouldn't fight and claw and the coach shouldn't coach for a win. But if a guy is 50, 50 on playing a game through an injury, sit him. If the team gets offers on Aziz Ojolari and Darius Slate at the trade deadline, trade them. The giants shouldn't have to necessarily put out the full, full blown best roster possible every Sunday, because today, Today was a crappy day to watch giant football, but it was a good day in terms of climbing the ladder to the end road at this end of the year, which is losses need to mount to the teams at the top of the draft. And until the NFL constitutes or institutes an NFL draft lottery, that's the, that's the unfortunate spot our fans are in Bryce. Just sucks to write this point, Sean week nine, November 3rd. It's now dark at five o'clock every day. Yeah. And our miserable and dreadful lives when it comes to watching our football team, has almost completely ended in terms of what we're actually going to give to that team. The the emotion, yeah. you know, the passion, the support is just not there anymore, but for good reason. And, and as much as it sucks that we are in this position, position right now, we are. It doesn't change the fact that, you know, there are other people out there that want the Giants to win and whatever. The, those same fans, the ones that continue to want the Giants to win, are also those same fans who constantly bitch and moan when it comes to Daniel Jones. So right. you can't have it both ways. You know what I mean? You want to move on from Daniel Jones. You want to get a good quarterback, you need to lose games. And it's not, the argument isn't about whether or not you want to root for your team to lose. It's about being okay with your team actually losing. You're not going to be able to sit right. there and be I'm like, okay with it oh, like, it, exactly. Like at the, I'm the okay end result, I'm not, I'm not angry tonight. I like it the is end what it result is. should be looked at as a positive when it's a loss. If you win a game that you shouldn't have won, major upset, look at the Green Bay game like, like, like last year. It, over the course of this, you know, this next, you know, eight games for the Giants, there will be one game where they win a game they're not supposed to. It's just going to happen. Brian Dable's a good coach. He schemes a good offense. It's going to happen, right? Yeah. At that time, you could be happy about it, sure, and be excited, but you should also be happy when they lose. But, but this sucks, is the thing. But it's better. Even if they get one of those wins down the street, and it might be this week in Germany, at least losing a game like today where you are in count. the game. They're, they're, they're predicted to win this game, though. Like, that's not – I'm talking about, like, a, a you know, well, game like the Well, but still, Eagles but game. it – but they were predicted to win the Washington New England games last year. My point is you're allowed to lose those yeah. games too. The Saints yeah. were predicted to beat the Carolina Panthers today. My point is even if you do win that game, losing a game like today does help you climb that overall draft part. And like winning on a necessary game is going to kill them. So I don't know, man. It's just like that. I hate having that conversation right now. But the truth is, I, I guess I'm saying that to say as, as much as this sucks and as much as it feels frustrating, it's going to continue to feel frustrating. So you might as well get rewarded in the end with the highest possible draft pick, right? I mean, if it's going to suck, Really, is that three-hour relief of a big Sunday win? Like, today, would you feel much better about this team? I, no. I don't know. It no, just no. It's the reality of the league, and I think just the idea, <laughs> the reason I bring this up is facing Jaden Daniels should be a reminder of that. It, yeah. it just should be a reminder exactly. that we you're wrong if you, if you think that. Now, today, what went wrong today? Well, look, they went with a run-heavy offense in the first half. I understood what they were doing. 
They get a penalty, uh, a touchdown called back at one point with Darius Slayton yes. offensive pass interference, which yes. like, very ticky tack it was if he doesn't finish it, but you can't call that there. Yeah. yeah. The Giants today did a typical thing they've done all year, right? They did it on Monday Night versus Steelers. They fought like hell, ultimately lost. Ultimately, you see that the quarterback had his moments, but also held them back. But I think today, Bryce, what was most alarming to me and what I worry about for holding a locker room all year is the defense didn't feel like the same defense we've seen all year. Nope. Um, nope. And I know double teams, triple teams. I haven't like gone back and watched tape on all this. Dexter Lawrence has felt like his most non-existent game of the year. I, like, I don't remember yeah. really feeling like he was getting his name called. Brian Burns did next to nothing. Even Aziz Ojolari was, you know, he made a couple of ways, was relatively quiet. They're getting gashed on the run. That that other D tackle two spot is terrible. Cordell Flott obviously had the bad moment versus McLaurin, which is ironic because he he didn't have a bad day, but the touchdowns are going to show up yeah. the worst. Yeah. Um, yeah. How could they continue to get what happened at that end of the first half, too? Where you have him in, you know, third and forever at midfield, Shook. and two plays later with 22 seconds left for them to have ended up with a touchdown is just unacceptable. Drew, so Drew Phillips needs to make that. He needs to make that tackle. Make that tackle. Yeah, and Drew Phillips been great all year. The defense regressing yeah. today was a big problem because if the defense starts, Deontay Banks is one thing, and he was talked to, but if it just kind of feels like this defense loses its steam, man, I wonder if that just boils over in the locker room where internally they start to combust a little bit because that was the one thing foundationally that felt like it was holding the Giants together and being a competitive team. And the defense today at times felt non-competitive. It feels like an inevitable at this, at this point, right, Sean? Like it, feel, right. it feels like it, it could compound into something where Dable, I mean, listen, Shane Bowen has done a really good job in his first season with the Giants. He's going to be with the Giants for as long as Brian Dable and Joe Shana with the Giants. He's, his job is very safe because of how well he's done. What can you possibly do? How much more can you possibly convince your defense to go out there and to do a good job when your offense is as bad as it is? Yeah. In the first half, it was terrible. You know, the, the Giants scored 23 points in this game, Sean. They have not scored 25 points on offense. Since the Eagles game, the, the second one that they, they won last year and the second Eagles game, the last game of the season. So, yes, they have more than 25 points this this year, this calendar year, but they don't have 25 points. And I know, you know that they scored over 25 points the Seahawks game, but the block kick at the end, so I don't count that. Yeah. Either way, this offense lacks the explosiveness. They lack the firepower to give the defense what they need. And the Giants did control the possession in this game. If you look at it, they controlled the possession. They kept the defense off the field for the majority of the game. They moved the ball well. They ran the ball extremely well throughout the game. How good is Tyrone Tracy, man? How, how good is this kid? How good? And and and, and this is, this should silence there because I know there's still people out there that think Saquon letting him go was the wrong move. This nah. should this should quell all of your doubts. This should quell all of your hatred and concern and vitriol towards the Giants for what they did and not bringing back Saquon Barkley. Look who they just got. Look who they just got. Who's under contract He's, this year and the next four? Tyrone Tracy is running better than Saquon Barkley ever did in offenses when Andrew Thomas was hurt. Period. Stop. I don't want to say that. I, I'm not going as far to say that. That's that's a little insane to say. I, I, no, I, it's I not. think it is. It's true. I think it is. I think it is. True. I think it is. Saquon would dance beyond that Maybe. line of scrimmage with Thomas out and get swallowed backwards. Tracy runs forward. Sorry, he's a, listen. He's a he's a better receiving back than Saquon was, and even is now with all these drops that we still continue to see. Not our problem anymore. Tyrone Tracy is a beast. So give give you got to give credit to him. The fact that he's now he's now out working Singletary is is something that I I didn't expect. One of one of my friends picked him up in our dynasty league. I'm like, what the hell are you doing? You're an idiot. And uh, look who's sitting pretty in his lineup now. But I think that. You know, there are some positives to this game, and there are things to build on. We could sit here and constantly talk about the BS, you know, you know the Slayton pick play, which they called, and and then the Drew Phillips missed tackle, and they kind of got screwed by the refs today. There, 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 there was a, there was a call that with ten minutes to go in the Every second quarter, the Drew Phillips hold where he where, where he was clearly held. He's screaming to the officials. Every week they do. They don't call that. Okay. Every week. Honestly, Sean. Honestly, Sean. Everything happens for a reason. They're getting screwed. The Giants are losing games. They need to lose. So right. I'm not going to sit here and complain. If the Giants were in a playoff push and this was happening, I think both of us would be losing our you-know-what because yeah. it's 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 unacceptable for, for the NFL. And the fact that you see it so much, not just with the Giants, but you haven't you seen it a lot with the Giants. Yeah, it's 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 a mess. But 
I want to I want to talk about another thing here because I I, I know you're going to get to it at some point. So I'm going to I'm going to advance the, the two point story. try. Yeah, yeah. Let's I need go. to talk to you about go. it. Give me your thoughts. I, go ahead, I, man. I I when the, the second they trotted out the offense again for the second week in a row, no stupid formation this time. Not 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 you know. 15 guys wide left. Thank God that that wasn't the case. The fact that we have to sit here and continuously have this conversation with the analytics first, what the, the, the eye test is, the fact that Daniel Jones is not a good enough quarterback where you can be doing this. And even if they do, like, here's the thing. You, you, you take the extra point, right? You could go for two and win the game. I, I just, I, I still can understand. You'd rather not have that, that, you know, the anxiety of knowing that, oh, I'm down eight now. You know, we have to get the, the two-point right? conversion. It's a momentum killer. Why? Why? why ex- exactly. You, you score a great touchdown there. Whatever. Then they go for two. Daniel Jones doesn't even throw the ball. Yeah. He doesn't even get the ball out of his well, hands. Well, that's the other thing. He's got to get fine, rid of the fine, ball. Like, fine, fine if the play call is going to be good enough where it's like, okay, we, we, we practice this a million times throughout, throughout practices throughout the week. We really like this play. You see that Lions do that a lot. They've got all these plays up their asses, and you know that they're going to work. The Giants don't have those plays in that moment, in that you know two-point try. Those are the types of plays you need to pull out, and you need to be pretty sure that you're successful on them. Now at 0 for 2, they still have not converted, by the way, and they kept saying it throughout the broadcast. They have not converted on a two-point conversion this year, Sean. Why continue to test this out? Analytics or not, it makes zero sense. To me. It doesn't. That's crazy. Yeah, and look. Uh, I covers, I have no problem name each other. Jordan Renan covers the Giants. Me and him, we're just going back and forth disagreeing on this. Uh, Chris McMonagle, WFN, I've been disagreeing with this. So here, I'm going to give you their argument, Bryce, because you and I are in lockstep. Yeah. Yeah. Their argument is, if you don't think the Giants going for two is smart because their offense stinks and not all teams are created equal, which is what I believe, right? The analytics tell you they hit it 50%. That is done on an NFL basis, not a team-by-team basis. So it's treating every team like they're equals, Okay. The Giants, with no left tackle right now, and with a quarterback scared to throw under duress, are not the same as some other teams that would do this. So the argument that people would make is, well, if you're scared of them getting that, then why would you think they could get an extra scoring drive? Because remember, the thought being, if you get the two on the first try, then all you need is that one more scoring drive. If you're playing for both extra points, you get the third. Here's what I would say. Like you said, a team that struggles to score offensively, the last thing you want to do is deflate them after a touchdown score. So when they fail to go for two, or when they fail to convert for two like they did the last two weeks, you could feel the momentum of the entire sideline and team being sucked out. That's tangible. That's something. Yeah, absolutely. If you score that second touchdown and you feel like, wow, we came back on the precipice of either tying or taking the lead, and then you want to do what you did in Tennessee a couple of years ago, I have less of an issue the second go around, despite the crappy yeah. left tackle, despite the quarterback, because you know what? Yeah. Now it's... Now it's whatever. And then there's going to be nothing tangible about killing momentum after that. At that point, the game is likely over one way or another. You, you've either won or lost. I think that's the best way to approach it. Or you kick the two extra points and then you're hoping your defense gets a stop. You kick a field goal, something like that. And you win on a field goal. And then you don't need three yeah. touchdown drives to me, giving this team one opportunity from the two and a half yard line with, again, this is very important. Personnel matters. Really no left tackle. And a quarterback scared to throw the ball under duress. That's not the same as Joe Burrow or Josh Allen or Tua running a play for two down 14. It's just not. So to me, it's about understanding your personnel, understanding your team, and understanding your situation. I understand Brian Dable is trying to coach this team like they're a great team. They're not a great team. Or at least some of these parts are not great parts. Dable knows the quarterback stinks. He's basically told us it for months, right? So to continue to call these two-point plays, I just think is that's where I have a disconnect with the head coach. You're not understanding the guys out there. You 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 say this, that, and the other. You know you can't trust them on certain plays, and then you're running that. Yeah. To me, it's senseless. It makes no sense. It, it killed all momentum. Now, does Washington go have to go back out there? Could a defense have stopped them? Uh, sure. But still, you're in a spot, man, where – even the Giants got the ball back with like 45 seconds, had they actually been wound up? Think about it. The whole defense is playing that last Washington grind out drive. Like, what does it matter? Our offense isn't going to score a touchdown anyway. When in reality, at that point, it could have been 28 25 with a field goal forces overtime. Your mindset of an entire team changes. It's senseless, it's useless. And man, of all the things that people want to kill Brian Dable for, I'm surprised more don't kill him for this. This is crazy. Yeah. I mean, I, I just, I, we're, we're both. In the exact same boat here. With this, and throw the ball to Bryce. You know, I know. Jones Get the ball out of your hands. 
I, you know, you just got to make a, well, whatever. It gets picked off. It gets picked off. Make a, make a throw. Yeah. The worst thing that can happen is you don't throw the ball because then nothing happens. You get tackled. What if something got tipped up that, you know, just get rid of the yeah. ball. Sean, watching Jaden Daniels, the, sh- the third and short situations, the fourth and short situations, I would feel so comfortable with him at the helm in my offense going for two. Versus a Daniel Jones. And of course, you're mentioning the fact that the Giants don't have a left tackle, which is true. It is very true. Here's my thing as well. Let's say they don't get this, they don't get two, right? The first time. Then they score again. Then you have to, that's twice you're going for two and you know you can't convert. You know right. you struggle so that's heavily crazy. to convert. That's and you just times. saw this last week. You just saw this last week. Can you just understand the team? And look, you finally hit the quarterback you want in the draft and the offense starts to hum along. And you want to pull that crap? It. Do, do it. it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Because I wouldn't have a problem with other teams with other situations doing it. The Giants are not equipped to do that. I'm sorry. Exactly. They're not. And by the way, asking for three scoring drives is not outlandish when you consider you have multiple downs to get first downs, meaning multiple plays and multiple shots. I know that sounds like a lot, but tightening everything up at the two and a half yard line with basically what 12 and a half yards to play with, to find somebody in the end zone with like, that is harder to do than drive down the field. I, I don't understand the argument otherwise, but uh, again, it, and, and then a Manette loss. And as you can tell, if you're listening to this, like listen to me and Bryce, man, all this frustration. If the giants were a win away from the division, we're screaming and yelling louder about the two point conversion, but they're not. Hey, Sean, so that le- leaves wanna, us with I the wanna, apathy I part. To, I want to talk about what? one more thing in this game. That was yeah. that was egregious and pathetic throughout the game, and it honestly leads me to believe that they have no reason to continue going for two. It's the fact that they dropped so many passes today. Oh, Theo Johnson! Theo Johnson, oh three, God. three big drops. Wandale, Wandale had one, a bad one, you know, down the stretch of that game. It's just like that combined with the issues with the offensive line, combined with the fact that Daniel Jones is their quarterback. Why the f? Are you leaving it the chance? Kick the extra point. I know they, they, the kicking situations, whatever. It's a 33-yarder. Anyone in the XFL can kick that. Yeah, the majority of college kickers can kick a 33-yard field goal. Just kick the freaking extra point, and let's deal with it when we get there. Just like, like it's also like it, uh, it, the momentum thing is massive because obviously we've seen that now twice in the last two weeks. But, like, it just I, – I can't foresee this continuing to happen and for it to be working at some point with this offense. With the personnel could, they have. How could that many of them always drop passes? Like Slayton has had this problem. Wondell's had this problem. Now Theo Johnson has this problem. Wait, 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 wait. Are we are we, are we going to just like let Malik Davers off the hook as well? Oh. He's been dropping passes left and right. Okay. That's the one here's, knock on him. That's the one knock on him. Bryce, I agree. The drops. Bryce, and I'm not absolving him from this, but here's the yeah, problem. Yeah, yeah. That's the when you're Malik Neighbors, it sucks to drop a pass. I live with it because you make up for it in other ways. Yeah, I don't live with it with these other guys. And Theo Johnson f- makes that great touchdown grab. Um, you could see it in Theo Johnson, like you could see what they saw on a fourth round pick. But Jesus Christ, can you catch the ball? I mean, he could have bailed that Daniels so many times today. Him, him but and Adam Ingram, two pieces in a pot. Those are the plays, man, that make you walk away and go, "Is Daniel Jones that better quarterback?" Over overall, though, he just cannot overcome these things. It's just and, amazing. Unless, unless. Lest we forget. It's like a black cloud, man. He plays quarterback. Yeah, Everybody no, drops I know, passes. I know. I know. Uh, let, lest we forget the team that they played in this in this in this game, the Commanders. Yeah, the, command- the one team yeah. that Daniel. It's it's the only constant of his career. There's nothing consistent beat, about his man? career besides the fact that he performs well against the Commanders. There's huh. nothing else. Nothing. Now, to be fair, That's this it. is a Dan Quinn defense, and he's always stunk against Dan Quinn defenses. So it is a little different now. But still, still sees commanders. that uniform, and that's usually a game he plays well in. Yeah, yeah. It's unbelievable. Well, Bryce, look, on that note, I'm going to have some dinner. I'm going to watch Sunday Night Football. I'm going to watch Joe Flacco play Sam Darnold, both at a higher level than Daniel Jones plays quarterback. I'm going to remind myself, one of these guys could just be the giant quarterback next year. And then you'll be playing a Sunday night game where you won't feel like you're miserable. We're going to be back at the end of the week previewing a trip to Germany. The schnitzel, the beer, the whole nine. It's the Giants and it's the Panthers. You're going to still want to download and subscribe because as the season goes on and as the season gets worse, we'll probably sound a lot like Bob Euchre in Major League. And who knows? Things could get real wonky down the second half of the year for Bryce and me. At Bryce Gelman on Twitter. At Sean Morash on Twitter. Thank you, everybody. One Giant Step available free on the Odyssey app everywhere podcasts are available. As always, thanks for taking One Giant Step with us.